Hello everybody, and welcome to the University of Connecticut School of Medicine. My name is Chris Morosky, and thank you for taking the time to watch this video on how to tie one and two-handed knots. Over the next 15 minutes or so, I'd like to introduce you to a somewhat silly, but memorable way of learning how to tie surgical knots. After watching this video, and with a little bit of practice, this will become basic muscle memory. So get out your sneakers, and let's get practicing, because this right here is how I learned how to tie surgical knots. Okay, so for starters, we're going to talk about two-handed knots. Now, the simple concept here is that you need to learn how to tie around both your index finger and tie around your thumb. The other thing that's important to keep in mind is that you're eventually going to want to make a finger circle, and then you're going to also want to make something called, that I like to call the suture circle. You can see there's kind of a circle right here. So to get started, I'm going to teach you how to tie around your index finger, then I'm going to teach you how to tie around your thumb. These will not be flat knots. And what we'll do is after that, we're going to alternate back and forth from index finger to thumb. And then you put down flat knots with two flat knots going after each other being a square knot. So for starters, you want to start with the little position I like to call shooting guns. Now, if you're ever in the operating room and you have to do this and you're getting nervous, just know, come back to shooting guns because this is the starting point. So with your fingers making two little guns, you're going to hold the suture in in with your other three fingers. Now you do want to learn how to tie with both your left hand and your right hand, but I'm just going to show you how to do this with your right hand for starters. So let's start with the index finger. So with the index finger, you're going to do what I call internal rotation. You're going to create half the suture circle. With, with that, you're now going to do the other half of the suture circle to make, you can see there's a loop of suture around my index finger. With that, you make a very nice finger circle and then you push your opposite finger, so in this case the thumb, through the suture circle. You then pick up your tail, pinch it in between your finger and thumb, and push the tail back through the suture circle and tie it down. You've now tied a knot. It's not a flat knot, which is okay. So I just want you to practice doing the index finger over and over and over again until that becomes muscle, muscle memory. So something like this. down. Internal rotation, suture circle, close your finger and thumb, push your thumb through the suture circle, really push it through, like overdo this at first. Pinch the tail, push the tail back through your suture circle, and down. Internal rotation, suture circle, finger circle, push your thumb through, grab the tail, push it back, and down. And one more time, internal rotation, suture circle, Close the finger circle, push your thumb through, grab the tail, push it back, and down. Okay, so now we're going to work on the thumb side of things. So again, start with shooting guns, and whereas the index finger was an internal rotation, you're going to kind of externally rotate with your thumb. But same concept, you're going to create half the suture circle here, you're going to bring the other loop around to create that whole suture circle like you can see. Then you close your index finger and thumb, push your index finger through, grab the tail, pinch it between your fingers, push that tail through your suture circle, and put it down. Again, in slow motion, shooting guns, external rotation, suture circle around your thumb, close your index finger and thumb, push your index finger through, pinch the tail, push it through the suture circle, down. External rotation, suture circle, index finger and thumb to make your finger circle, push that index finger through, pinch the tail, push it back through the loop, and down. And one more time, external rotation, suture circle, finger circle, push that index finger through, pinch the tail, push it through, and down. Okay, so now we're going to practice going back and forth from our index finger to our thumb. So back from index finger to thumb. There's one more thing you need to do to be able to tie square knots, which is crossing, but we're going to get to that in a second. So tie flat knots or granny knots here, that's okay, but just go back and forth. So here we go. Index finger, through, down, thumb, through, down. Index finger, a little slower this time through, pinch it, down, thumb, 
push your finger through, pull the tail through, down. Index finger, down, thumb, down. The more you practice this, the faster you're going to get. But make sure you maintain good technique because you're going to teach yourself how to tie bad knots if you don't do this fluidly and smoothly. And make sure you're going back and forth from index finger to thumb each time. Okay, and now to finally tie our square knots. Now with this, you're going to have to know about the concept of crossing your tails to make this work. So for starters, when you tie a knot, the first thing you want to do is cross your tails. Now depending on which tail you cross, you're going to start with either your index finger or your thumb, also depending on which hand you're using. But let's stick with the right hand. So with my right hand, if I take my right tail and cross it over the left, I have to start here with my thumb to make this knot go down flat. Now, if I were to cross my left tail over my right, I would have to start with my index finger on my right hand to make this knot go down flat. The last concept here is that as you're tying, not only do you have to alternate back between index finger and thumb, you also need to alternate on which direction you pull down your knot. So for example, if I cross with my right over my left tail and I start with my right hand, I'm actually going to start with my thumb and I'm going to pull my right tail down. So that's thumb down. As I come back up and do my index finger, I now want to tie with my right hand up. We'll go thumb down, index finger up. Thumb down, index finger up. And you can see I'm not going a full 90 degrees or 180 degrees in each direction. It's just 90. It's a little off skew, but you do have to pull your knot down in that direction. If you do this, alternating back and forth, and you alternate between your index finger and your thumb, you'll find that you tie what looks like a chain link or square knots. Okay, so the final step here is to show you how to do this on one of these practice boards. A lot of you guys are going to get this at your schools. There's one dark string and one light string. These are kind of nice because once you tie square knots, you can kind of see it weave back and forth if you've tied a square knot. What I really want everybody to practice, though, is this whole concept of crossing and doing this one with your right hand, and then if you get good at your right hand, do it with your left hand. So I'm going to show you what this looks like with the left hand. So if I cross, again, with my right over my left, and I have to use my index finger to make this first knot go down flat. I'm going to take my right hand and go up here. Now I come back and I do my thumb. And with my thumb, my right hand is going to go down. Index finger, right hand up. Thumb, right hand down. Index finger, right hand up. Thumb, right hand down. It doesn't matter really which hand you pick, as long as you consistently go back and forth between your index finger and thumb, and then cross your hands. And again, like I said, what's nice about these practice boards is that when you're done, if you've tied square knots, you can see this darker half of the suture going back and forth. And you can know that it looks like a chain link, and those are square knots. Okay, so now an introduction to one-handed knots. So one-handed knots are kind of nice because if you've got something on one of your suture ends, um, or if you're just in a tight space and need to tie knots, um, you can do one-handed knots pretty nicely. Now a lot of people will tell you that you can't tie one-handed knots as square knots, but you certainly can, as long as you alternate back and forth between what I like to call the karate chop and the figure four. And pay attention to crossing up and down as you tie down your knots. So we'll break this down, and first we're going to learn about the karate chop. Okay, so for starters, an introduction to the karate chop. So just like with two-handed knots, you start off with uh, shooting guns. With the karate chop, your starting position is a figure four. Now again, we're only using one hand, so your other hand can pretty much be doing nothing. So for the karate chop, you make the letter D. I usually pull on my finger and just hold my middle finger and my ring finger out. With this, you want to do an internal rotation or karate chop down on your suture that you're holding in your tying hand. You can see this is going to create half of your suture circle. You want to bring the other suture around to create the full suture, suture circle around both your fingers. 
and then you need to bend your middle finger back over the loop of suture, grab this little part that's being held between your middle finger and pinched in between your index finger and thumb, pinch it, and then flick that little part through, which is how you bring it through the loop of suture circle. So again, slightly uh, sped up, karate chop down. This is an internal chop. Bring the loop of suture over, grasp that little part of suture on tension, pinch it in between your middle finger and your, and your ring finger, flick the tail through, pull it down. Karate chop, suture circle, grab that tail, flick it through. One more time, karate chop, suture circle, grab that tail, flick it through. And one more time, karate chop, suture circle, grab the tail, flick it through. You're halfway there. That's the karate chop. Okay, so now on to the figure four. So whereas the karate chop was an internal rotation, the figure four you have to think of an external rotation. You want to create a little bridge with your index finger and your thumb, and you want to come out and around to create a little trapeze across these two fingers. And you want to make that pretty big, okay? You can see that this also creates half of your suture circle. So now bring the little trapeze part over your, your other side of your suture, the part that you're holding on tension, and you're going to create what looks like a figure four. Again, starting position for the karate chop is here. For the figure four, you're going to hold the suture back down in these three fingers, almost like shooting guns. Form this little pincher, external rotation to create your little bridge across the two fingers. Bring this over your suture on tension to create your suture circle. Now you're going to bend your finger and you got to flick that little part that's sort of like the trapeze there, which is why you need it to be nice and big and on tension. And you're going to flick that through the suture circle. Pull it through, down. All right, so now a little more fluidly. Pincher, trapeze. Here's the figure four. You're going to grab that little trapeze and flick it through the loop of suture circle, down. Starting position, pincher little trapeze right here. Make that figure four. That's actually how you make your suture circle. Grab that little trapeze part on tension. This takes some practice. And then you're going to want to flick it through, pull the tail through. One more time. Pincher, trapeze, figure four. Flick that tail right through and down. Okay, so now putting this all back together, again, you're going to have to alternate back and forth between your karate chop and your figure four. And just like with the two-handed knots, you're also going to have to alternate between when your right hand goes up and your right hand goes down. So to put this together, here we go. Karate chop, grab it, and for this I'm going to have my right hand go up, come back to figure four, pull the tail through, my right hand goes down. Karate chop. Right hand goes up, figure four, right hand goes down. Karate chop, right hand goes up, figure four, right hand goes down. Karate chop, right hand goes up, figure four, right hand goes down. It's a little harder to see this on the shoe than on your practice board, but if you look at it, it does look like a little bit of a chain rope here, and that's how you know these are square knots, even with one-handed knots. Okay, and this is how it would look like if you used it on the practice board. So again, karate chop down. Actually, we're gonna go up, figure four, down. Karate chop up, figure four, down. Karate chop up, figure four, down. Karate chop up, figure four, down. And you can see these are nice square knots with the purple kind of winding back and forth. Okay, and so that's about it. So once you get this down, it's going to go about this fast. And this basically becomes muscle memory. And then when people are distracting you or if you're a little nervous, you don't even have to think about it. It's just something that you kind of do automatically. 
And the key here really is you want to do this with something big like your shoelace or your practice board because you want to make sure you get the muscle memory down of tying good square knots before you move on to small suture. Because if you practice with small suture at first, you won't be able to see your knots. You may end up teaching yourself some bad habits that you don't really want to propagate all the way through. So grab your shoe, give this a practice, have some fun, and I hope you find this video to be helpful.